Welcome to the first video where we're going to cover some common transactions that impact companies' financial statements. We're actually going to revisit the accounting equation in this video, so this video will actually take us full circle in the accounting module. We'll start with this now very familiar accounting equation, and this time we're going to look at how a few common transactions for companies actually impact this accounting equation. Let's look at our first example. Let's assume that Aggie Inc. sold $1,000 in services on credit. We've provided a good or service in this example, so we know we're going to actually need to record revenue, even though, since the services are sold on credit, we're not yet going to receive cash. So let's look at the impact this transaction will have on the accounting equation. In this example, we need to record revenue because it was earned. We provided the good or service. So we're going to increase shareholders' equity by $1,000. Remember this illustration we looked at before, where we showed that revenues and expenses flowed up into net income and then up into retained earnings, which goes into shareholders' equity. So in this example, where we recorded $1,000 in revenue, those revenues are flowing up all the way into shareholders' equity. So that's why that increase of $1,000 in revenue is showing up as an increase in shareholders' equity. Let's go back to the example. We've talked about this $1,000 increase in shareholders' equity coming from revenue. The $1,000 increase in assets is coming from accounts receivable. This term on credit means that we've not yet received cash for this sale. We're letting our customer pay us later. If we remember back from our assets video, letting our customer pay us later means that we need to record accounts receivable now. That shows the balance we're owed by our customers. So in this example, the increase in revenue increased shareholders' equity, and we also need to record AR because the services were sold on credit. We're not receiving cash yet, but that does not mean we wait to record the revenue. Remember from our last video that revenue can be recognized as long as we expect to receive cash in the future, and it must be recognized when the revenue is earned meaning when the good or services are provided. Since both of those things are true, we expect to receive cash and we've earned the revenue, we need to go ahead and record the revenue, but instead of recording the receipt of cash, we'll record AR. Either way, assets increase by $1,000, which then balances with this increase in shareholders' equity. Before we go on to the next example, let's talk about balancing and what that really means. The increase in assets and the increase in shareholders' equity are on opposite sides of this equation. So by increasing both sides by the same amount, the equation balances. When we say each transaction must balance, or the equation must balance, or even that the balance sheet as a whole must always balance, this is what we mean. Each transaction in accounting has two components. There's always two sides to every accounting transaction. So every accounting transaction will always affect two things, and that effect needs to balance. So we couldn't just increase revenue here. We have to also increase something on this side of the equation or decrease liabilities so that those offset. We'll look at a few more examples to try to keep driving this home. Let's go on to the next example. In our next example, let's assume Aggie received $1,000 in cash for services previously sold on credit. Do you see the connection between this problem and the last problem? In the last problem, we recorded the sale for the items that were sold on credit, and we recorded accounts receivable. Now we're actually going to collect cash for that accounts receivable. So, we're only recording the receipt of cash part. We don't need to record the actual sale on credit because that happened in a previous transaction that we already recorded. We just need to remember how that transaction was recorded so we know what to do here. When we sold the goods on credit, we recorded revenue and accounts receivable. So that balance that our customer owes us is hanging out in accounts receivable right now. Now that we're receiving the cash, 
let's look at how this part of the transaction is going to impact the accounting equation. Now that we're actually receiving that cash that's hanging out in accounts receivable, we need to move the balance from accounts receivable and put it into cash. So here, we're recording the receipt of cash, which increases assets, and here we're recording the reduction in accounts receivable, which decreases assets. Again, our equation balances. The net impact to assets over here is zero. We added 1,000, subtracted 1,000, and those offset each other to zero. Just as the impact to liabilities and stockholders' equity is zero. So again, our equation balances, even though it looks a little bit different than our previous example, where we had $1,000 on this side and $1,000 on this side. Here, we're adding and subtracting from the same side of the equation, but those offset each other. Let's look at a third example. In this example, we'll explore how buying inventory impacts the accounting equation. Our example here says Aggie Inc. buys inventory for $10,000 on account. Buying inventory on account means instead of paying cash at the time of the purchase, the company is going to owe a supplier cash for the inventory, which they will have an obligation to pay in the future. You should have heard a few terms in there, like obligation. Remember from the liability video that when we have an obligation to someone, we're going to have to record a liability for it. We're also buying inventory in this transaction. So again, there's two things that are happening. Let's look at how those two things impact the accounting equation. We can start with either part of that transaction, either the getting inventory or the fact that we bought it on account. If we start with the inventory piece, then we need to increase assets by $10,000. That's represented here for that inventory that we now own. We also need to reflect that we owe someone money in the future. Remember back to the liabilities video that this is called accounts payable when we owe a supplier for inventory that we purchased on credit. Accounts payable is specifically just dedicated to the purchase of inventory on credit. So if we bought a building, we wouldn't call that accounts payable. We'd call that a different kind of liability. We've already covered these concepts in pieces in other videos, such as inventory in the asset videos and accounts payable in the liability videos. These transactions are just helping us to bring all of these concepts together. So if you find yourself a little bit lost, you may need to go back and review the previous videos again. Here, we want to focus mostly on the fact that the accounting equation balances, so we increased assets for inventory, increased liabilities for accounts payable, and we balance, which is part of the goal here. So we'll go on to the next example. This fourth example and final example is a little bit more complicated because we need to record two transactions. It also builds off of the last example that we just did. Let's assume Aggie Inc. bought $10,000 in inventory on January 1st. Remember, that was the last transaction that we just recorded. Now, they sold that inventory for $25,000 on February 15th for cash. The question is asking us, what should the company record on February 15th? We aren't going to worry about the January 1st transaction because that's already been recorded. In fact, we just recorded that transaction on the previous slide. What we want to look at now is the February 15th transaction when we sold that inventory. So when we're looking at the impact on the accounting equation, we want to remember that we sold something for cash. So we need to increase assets by the $25,000 we received in cash. We also, at that time, provided a good to our customer. So we also need to record revenue, which is going to roll up into shareholders' equity. So that takes care of one part of this transaction, just the sale, the receipt of cash, which increased assets, and the revenue that we earned by providing that good to our customer, which increased shareholders' equity. Now, 
we have another transaction that we have to record. Since we sold that inventory, we no longer have it in our possession, so we need to decrease inventory by $10,000. That was the cost of the inventory. We're not going to decrease inventory by the sales price, we're going to decrease inventory by what we paid for that inventory. We also need to decrease shareholders' equity. Because remember, when we sell inventory, we move it from an asset to an expense. Think about what we call that expense. Do you remember? We call it cost of goods sold. So we move this amount from inventory and asset account to an expense called cost of goods sold at the time the inventory is sold. Cost of goods sold is an expense. So recording an expense reduces net income, which reduces retained earnings, which reduces shareholders' equity. Remember that illustration where revenues and expenses flow all the way up to shareholders' equity. Again, we see here that our equation balances. In total, assets went up by $15,000 for the cash received minus the inventory we took off of our books. Shareholders' equity also went up by $15,000 for the revenue that we earned minus the cost of goods sold that we also had to record. This example should actually look very familiar to you. We actually recovered this example in the asset video on inventory. We added a few more details here, like looking at the cash and revenue side of the transaction. But as you can see here, it's the same exact problem. On this slide, we looked at just the inventory going in, coming out, and moving over to an expense. And we looked at the gross profit piece, where revenue increased by $25,000 and cost of goods sold decreased by $10,000, giving us a gross profit of $15,000. That's what we're seeing here is that $15,000 increase in gross profit that flows through net income and all the way up to shareholders' equity. We are now done with some sample transactions. In the next video, we will look at a series of transactions for one company and track them in Excel. Make sure you feel comfortable with both the accounting and Excel videos we've covered up to this point before you start the next video.